had five pupils. Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to the Martial Arts Theater 3000 Venom Mob Countdown. Just wanted to say thanks for all the support and comments on the video so far in the countdown. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. At number 15, we have Life Gamble. Now this one is interesting because it came out in 1979, but it was filmed before Five Deadly Venoms. And this one has a stellar lineup. I mean, the cast... It's amazing, from Li Yi Min to four of the five Venoms to Alexander Fu Shang. And with this cast, you would expect such fireworks. Now, you do get some fireworks, but one of the issues with this film is it takes about 45 minutes before anything really gets going with the plot and the buildup. So you may be sensing a theme here. Now, on the other films on my list so far, there was a big buildup, but it was so convoluted, as I stated, with just so many different characters introduced and dead ends for a lot of them. This one is better because a lot of characters were introduced, and there is a nice long period of character building. So when it gets to the payoff, you're more invested in the characters, and it's much better for it. But I have heard this one be called boring before, and I don't feel it is because Chang Che's directing is in a very nice period here in the 1977-78 era. And he tries more adventurous shots back then. In the 80s Chang Che movies, there was some big moments, but the camera work, it just didn't have the flair of his 70s work in my opinion. So if you do watch this one and find it a bit slow, definitely stick with it because after the 45 minute mark, it really just starts firing on all cylinders. Without giving too many spoilers, there's just a straightaway of so many betrayals. It might be the most I've seen in a Kung Fu movie. And I absolutely love Guac Choi's role in this. It's very similar to his role in Masked Avengers, where he's quiet and reserved but you know he has a very dark past and it's just one of his best roles in my opinion and to see Lo Mang also in a starring role alongside him is just a great pairing and the Venoms they're just really fresh on the scene and apparently the reason that he didn't release this is because he saw the potential and he wanted to wait and then properly present them all in Five Deadly Venoms, and then he released this after. I'm not sure how true that is, but it makes sense. So for the plot and acting, I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. They do a good job on the build-up, but it's very long. There's good character development, but not too much moves along on the plot itself. It's more about getting to know the characters, which is good but I just wish it had a little more plot points in the first half of the film. And for the action and fighting, I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. I was about to give it a 9 because once this starts going, it is great choreography. And the ending, as most of the Venoms films are, as you've seen, I've stated, is just phenomenal as usual. This has a different feel to it on this ending. You'll see, it's not your standard Venom-style choreography. It's before they fully got into displaying the Peking opera style. And while the plot on this one does take a while to get going, Life Gamble's secret weapon is its cast. And I gotta give that a 9 out of 10. It is just the best stars for this period, all in one spot. You can't go wrong. And for some ways to watch on this one, on YouTube, you can rent it in high definition for $2.99, or you could buy it for $7.99. And it's out of print now, but the Funimation DVD, which I own, is a great one to track down. And I have seen a Blu-ray, but I believe it's only an upscale of the DVD. So hopefully one day we'll get a proper Blu-ray release of this. Alright guys, so let me know down below what you think of Life Gamble if you've seen it, and I'll catch you in the next one.